Hello, everybody. Top question. How do you improvise a piece of music straight into the door? Um, this is something which a, a lot of people take for granted because you don't just do it. You go, bish, bash, bosh, shbang, here's a piece of music. But actually, uh, particularly those of you who come from either a score writing sort of background or a sort of... Uh, you know, even a songwriting background where you're just kind of strumming away a guitar. How you write music into this forbidding environment known as your door uh, is quite hard work um, because it's a completely different um, workflow and it's really easy for stuff to get all out of shape so that suddenly what was a great idea starts to sound um, really bad. So I'm going to give you a couple of ideas as to how to go about this. I'm breaking this process down into two separate um, stages. The first one being the imagining stage where you're actually sort of having your idea, um, hopefully, uh, uh, and the second part being the arranging idea. And I think although it's really easy for the two to get enmeshed and that's not always a good thing because before you, if you're not careful, you have a half-baked idea which you then have fully arranged and then it's too late to go back and have a fully baked idea. So you you need to uh, pace yourself and make sure that you're not going to move on too quickly to the arranging stage um, and re because when we hear bits of music and we hear hundreds of bits of music from our um, people applying for our um, uh, master's program in songwriting and film scoring um, you hear the music and sometimes the basic idea just hasn't been thought through well enough so it's really nicely uh, arranged mediocre thought and um i've said often uh, uh, that in many respects what um we we're all trying to do all the time is to do the simple things exceptionally well so it's not a matter of oh i can write a tune i can do a chord progression now i'm going to do something really complicated it's uh, <laughs> where did that voice come from oh maybe there's somebody maybe multiple personality syndrome no okay moving on um yeah so the point being um that you need to be really sure that your actual idea whatever it may be you know based around if it's a sort of piece of tonal music your melodic idea your harmonic idea all the rest of it is properly thought through um so that you know what your idea is so look um if you're going straight into your door hello door hello guy um, the first thing I do is turn off that click because if you're just messing about there's a real danger if you start messing about to the click that every piece of music you ever write is at 120 beats a minute because that's what it's 120 beats all doors always default to 120 beats a minute and so you go okay. no no there's more to life than 120 beats a minute. It's true. Um, so turn off the click. Um, you are going to need to turn it on again once you've worked out what your music needs. Um, so, you know, if you want to just... Um, so when you're coming up with an idea, don't start with um, an idea. Uh, don't start with a metronome. That's what I'm saying. Turn it off and just have your thought. Um, the next thing I'd say is um, get some, you know, what sound are you going to use? Now, you can go and sit at the piano, you can strum at a guitar, you can run around to the garden humming. If that's what floats your boat. I like my ukulele, it's a lovely ukulele. Um, but sooner or later you're going to get to the door and you're going to need to start having an idea. Is this chair sinky or am I going shorter? I don't know. Anyway, maybe it's the weight of the beard. No. Um, I will tend, when I'm having my ideas, to have basically to use some form of ensemble patch. The essence of it being that whatever it is, I can, I can play across the whole keyboard. Um, because I don't want to start going in with individual lines right at the beginning or I'm going to sort of lose my way. 
Um, so you can use whatever you like, obviously. Um, a lot of people will use a piano sound. This is piano tech. Um, a lot of people will use a string sound. That's uh, Spitfire Chamber Strings. Um, this, but you know, you don't have to be in an orchestral mode. Um, you can, this is a really, really good synth. It's Obsession from Synapse and... So I've got a kind of soft, sort of stringy kind of sound which I use. I really like it. Um, we'll come back to that. Um, but you don't have to start with, obviously, with, um, you know, a chord progression. You can start with a melody. You can start with an ostinato. You can go... etc. And then you can use that as the starting point. Or you can just use a sound. You know, you can use any, any of these little textural points um, or melodic points which you can use then to grow your piece of music. Um, all, okay. Elephant in the room. Um, how do you actually do this thing? <laughs> how do you improvise into... And obviously improvising is a huge subject. Um, and because I've been doing it every day of my working life, um, I, it, it's something I don't even think about very much anymore. But um, you need... You do need a certain amount of underpinning of theoretical knowledge to be able to improvise properly. What I mean is, if you start with, you need to know what chords are available to you, uh, what you can, you know, how you can change that by one note to change into a different chord. Okay, so we can go to a, do that and turn it into an E minor second inversion. Um, or I can go from there, I can raise the fifth to there, and I've uh, got an A minor first inversion. You need to see patterns on the keyboard. Um, so if I'm playing in a, a C minor. So I can see a way where I can go from C minor to E flat minor. And I just know what notes and what chords are available to me. That takes time. Um, and you need to really kind of uh, be able to see those sort of patterns and relationships. It's not the same as having grade eight theory or being able to um, do counterpoint or anything else like that. It's a more practical way of seeing harmony on a keyboard or indeed on a guitar. I mean, um, understanding chordal relationships, being able to hear them in your head because the relationship between melody and harmony is sort of like that. Can't get the two apart. Um, because the one informs the other and if you change one, then the other is obviously going to have to respond. And that's another really important thing, that you need to sort of conceive melody and harmony uh, at some. Because if, if I'm just playing a, a tune, I'm describing harmony on the keyboard. That tune is going G, C, little passing note over D, up to E flat. There we go, we're back to a C minor chord, look but it's not a C minor, it's a C minor, not first inversion, but second inversion, there. So even if you're just playing a tune, you're not just playing a tune, you're in a harmonic world. If you're not writing atonal music, which you know, each their own, but we're talking largely about um, writing tonal music. So you need to understand, I hate it when people say that, it really helps the process and the flow of improvisation if you can see the relationships between chords uh, uh, and keys on your keyboard in real time. Now to start with, that probably means sticking to a key which you know reasonably well. So you can, you can do your, you know, 
if you want to do a something poncy like a um, um, sort of drop in a little Neapolitan chord or whatever, um, you you need to sort of work out in one key how all that works. And then you can start moving around. But don't wait too long before you move into other keys. Otherwise, you just become... Who was, who was the famous, famous songwriter? Is it Irving Berlin, who had a transposing piano? He only played everything in one key and it just transposed it up and down for him. Um, because if you write in a different key, if you start in E minor, it sounds different. You know, and you'll have new ideas. So working in different keys is a really good thing. It's not scary. It's good, okay? Um, but you need to practice improvisation. It's not just something you can turn on at 6 o'clock on a Thursday evening and expect to work if you haven't worked at it. So just spend half an hour. What am I going to come up with in half an hour? See what happens, etc., etc. Um so that's the imagining stage. The arranging stage, is, I'm going to do, I'm going to imagine something very quickly. Okay, okay so. The... Okay, I'll go with that. Dun, 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 dun. Now I work out whether the too fast. Do you see what I mean? If you imagine the music first uh, and then you adjust the click. There you go, 110 beats a minute. That turned out to be right. Um, then we can have a little tune on the top of some description. But it's not moving around harmonically very much, is it? It's going... It's basically a C sus4. Then it goes to an E flat 6. So it's... But it's probably going to feel more like a... Um, the beginnings of an idea. Uh, now let's get the obsession in. Okay, so Let's say, let us just pretend. Okay, look, let's just have a word about the sunglasses of doubt here. Because imposter syndrome, all that, you're constantly stuck in this battle between am I writing something great or is it rubbish? And if you constantly say it's rubbish and you chuck everything away all the time, you'll never get anywhere. But equally, if you frequently say to yourself, I have just written Beethoven's Ninth as he would have written it if he'd had style and talent. Um, somewhere in between preposterous arrogance and terrible shrinking violet kind of syndrome is the happy place. And the happy place, uh, particularly in the imagining bit, we can sign the sunglasses of doubt to the happy box of improvisatory good fortune too complicated but the point being um you need to give yourself a bit of space to have an idea <laughs> don't just jump in there and constantly chuck everything out um because it you know you might be good so if we like that great let's move on and just do something else but another thing which uh, when you actually start arranging you need to this isn't 
This is not a fully fledged idea, is it? Okay. Um, if we... Th that's only one part of it. Where's this ostinato going to go? If it's... Okay, we can't... Oh, okay, I like that. No, I don't like that. Okay, so we now have a little chord progression where it goes to A flat, uh, which is a good place. I'm happy. I like A flat. Um, I'm not quantizing this. I'm just quantizing the first note so we can do that. Okay, so now we have a chord progression. Now, when you actually get to the arranging part, particularly when you're starting the improvisational journey, um, the thing which goes wrong more often than any other, it, you know, is you lose track harmonically of where you are. Uh, so look, here is uh, an arrangement. It's got three tracks. What could possibly go wrong? You know, give it a couple of hours and you've got 50 tracks and you've completely forgotten what's going on where. And what happens then, particularly if it's something which is a little bit modal, which is like we're playing here, that you're playing away, you're going... Okay. Now, harmonically, what is going on here and where am I? Because if you're just trying to write a tune or counter melody or other part, you need to know harmonically what's going on. So we're going to say, for the sake of argument, what I... It, that's a... Uh, it's a C minor, basically. Then it goes into a sort of... Then it goes to an A flat. What we're going to do... Uh, and I would recommend you do this when you first start um, work. Either just write down on a bit of paper, you know, bar, you know, bar numbers. You know, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, C minor. Then we're going to A flat, etc. You know, just like you, you can't see that because it's too thin. Um, there's another way of doing it in Cubase and probably others. Uh, you can actually put markers in and things like this. And what I'm going to put in is a... Where's a chord track? There we go, chord track. Um, and I can draw in what I want. Uh, let's... Uh, whoops. There we go. Uh, no, what do I want? Hang on. There we go. Double click on him. We're going to have C minor. There we are. Uh, Now we want to... Uh, do I have to call it A? For, okay, there we go. Do you see what I mean? So, oh, no, you can't see what I mean because I'm on the top of me. There we go. But if you've got that, then as we start building this up, so if I'm going to play in... For example, if I'm going to start playing in um, another string part... I know what notes are available to me because I'm looking at that and thinking, okay, if it's moving from a C minor to an A flat, um, then essentially I need to get rid of my G natural and start using an A flat because other, et cetera, et cetera. So as you start building layers and layers and layers up, as you're improvising in, um, you will stay on the straight and narrow because otherwise you'll get one part which will start, it's, it's, one part will start saying one thing harmonically and another part will be saying another and the two are kind of in a bad, bad sort of way. Um, so the key part to this is to build it up in sequence so that you're not, um, you're not trying to do the whole thing at once. We're not trying to produce a... Uh, a bonkers, uh, you know, million track arrangement of these first four bars, 
we're going to get our we're going to get our idea straight to start with. We're going to work out melodically and harmonically what's going on, um, and we're not going to move on to the arranging stage until we're really sure that what's going on there is right. Um, when we get to the arranging stage, we're going to be really clear about harmonically what goes on in each bar. Um, we're not going to overwrite. We're not going to chuck stuff in um, because then it just gets really kind of like. 58 people in a lift you can't it. what hey i'm gonna get the sunglasses a doubt out for that dodgy analogy actually it's better because have you noticed i've got this sun thing going through the window it's just disastrous today oh no okay but the heart of this and i think probably what some of you will take away from this is what i was talking about slightly earlier which is the whole improvising thing and seeing the keys and chords on on uh, on your keyboard and those fundamental relationships um, and being able to just dial that in and just sort of summon that up as and when you need it and then good things happen okay um, there's a whole nother stage to this which is obviously the structuring thing and I think what I'm going to go on next is just write a piece of music and we'll try and put some of this into action and um, we will look at the structure business because this is all very well for the imag okay that works um this this is all very well for this sort of imagining and the basic arrangement but then how are you going to turn this 20 second idea into um, a three and a half minute piece of music um you're going to need okay that that's structure and we will i'll talk about that in another uh, video in the very near future but i think that's enough to be going on with so practice your improvisation have fun if you found this useful um then feel free to join us <laughs> at uh, think space education uh, we do little short courses in music theory and how to write music and we do master's degrees uh, you know in songwriting uh, film scoring uh, music business lots of things so come and check us out and i'll be back and i'll see you very very soon bye bye